Welcome to Trojan Tech. Today we will be showing you how to install a Trojan Lithium 1-Pack into a club car precedent. To complete this installation, you'll need the following tools. A cordless drill, drill bits or hole saws including 3 8 inch, 7 8 inch, and 2 inch diameters. Drive bits or screwdrivers, flat, Phillips, hex, and torx, drive bit and socket extensions, 3 8 inch drive torque wrench, 3 8 inch drive sockets, including 12 and 13 millimeter, and a 9 16 inch deep socket. Side cutters or flush cut pliers, needle nose pliers, zip ties, and electrical tape. A cordless impact driver can also be useful for disassembly. Included with your purchase of the Trojan Lithium Ion One Pack battery is a charger, a gauge kit which includes a wire harness, an on-off button, and an LCD screen. You will also be provided with a mounting bracket that is cut to fit the custom vehicle's make and model. Begin by engaging the parking brake in the car. Make sure to turn the key switch to the off position. Next, you'll be removing the seat. Tilt forward and lift the hinges out from the front of the body of the vehicle. In the back of the car, flip the switch from run to tow. It is a good idea to mark your load cables with black tape for the negative cable and red tape for the positive cable before removal. Remove the nuts from the currently installed lead acid batteries. Starting with the main negative terminal followed by the main positive terminal. Continue removing the cables from the battery to battery connections. Once the battery cables are cleared, Remove the nuts from the battery hold downs and set the battery cables and hold downs to the side. These items will not be reused. Using a lifting strap, clip into the batteries and lift straight up and out. Remove the battery hold down S bar and set these aside. These will not be reused during the installation. Clear out any loose dirt or debris from the battery compartment with a rag or vacuum. Using a Torx bit, remove the star head bolt from the car panel at the front of the battery basin and from the kick plate at the bottom of the panel. Cut any zip ties to separate the cables within the bundle. Place the battery bracket into the basin. The wider end should sit on the passenger side while the notch lines up with the molded back side of the battery basin. Once the bracket is in place, use the supplied J-hook to fasten it to the car. Hook the J onto the crossbar under the car. Stack the flat washer and lock washer on the threaded end. Tighten the nut with a deep well socket to secure it tightly. Repeat these steps on the second mounting hole. Once the bracket is installed, place the charger in the basin on the driver's side. Orient the charger so the status lights are visible. Affix the charger to the base with screws. Now we will install the gauge and power button wire harness. The wiring harness has three wires on one end, a red wire to connect to the positive battery terminal, a black wire to connect to the negative battery terminal, and a canned communication cable. This end will stay in the battery basin. The other end of the cable has a six pin connector that plugs into the gauge display and two wire connectors that connect to the power on off button. This end will be routed through the front of the basin and under the kick plate. Continue routing the wire through the channel in the floorboard to the front of the car. Using a Torx bit, remove the three star head screws from the dashboard. Once all the screws are out, remove the dash face by pulling down and away to release the tabs. Remove the factory installed battery gauge and enlarge the hole using a 2 inch hole saw. Find a suitable location to mount the remote power button which will require a 7 8 inch hole. The LCD display can be secured to the dash with a click on locking back. 
The power button secures to the dashboard with a backing nut. Plug the six pin connector into the display and the two wire plug into the power button. Now it's time to prepare the battery mounting plate for battery placement. Place a flat washer, lock washer, and nut on the mounting studs. Thread the nut only a few turns so that the battery mounting feet can still slide under the washers. Team lift the battery into the compartment and slide the mounting feet under the washers on the studs. Secure the front feet on the studs with a flat washer, lock washer, and nut. Now, let's install the cabling to the battery, starting with the CAN communication cable connection. Remove the dust caps from the port on the front of the battery. The CAN cable is keyed so it will only fit the battery in one orientation. The notch on the cable should be at the top of the port when connecting. Connect the cable to COM port 1 and the CAN terminator to COM port 2. Twist the silver collars clockwise to secure. Now, remove your terminal protector from the positive terminal. Place the cables on the bolt. Start with a state of charge gauge cable and the red charger cable, then any accessory positive cables, and finally, the car main positive cable. Hand tighten the bolt into the positive terminal. Follow the same process for the negative terminal. Starting with the gauge negative cable, the black charger cable, any accessory negative cables, and finally, the car main negative cable. Then hand tighten. Make sure the cables are managed to allow for the reinstallation of the terminal protectors. Torque the bolts into the battery at 50 to 60 inch pounds. And replace the terminal protectors. Double check all of your connections and then turn on the battery by pressing and holding the power button for at least 6 seconds. The car won't power on until it's switched back into run mode, but verify that the state of charge gauge power is on and that the remote power button works to turn the battery off and then back on again by pressing it for one second each time. Replace the kick plate and the basin bolts. Return the car to run mode, and finally, replace the car seat. And now you're ready to release the beast.